Hey, what's up guys? Today, to honor the start of baseball season, I decided I'd put together a video to give you guys some tips on photographing baseball and softball games. Now, as far as being a sports fan goes, baseball's probably not my most favorite sport to watch. It probably ranks pretty low. I only watch a couple of games a year and then obviously the playoffs and the World Series. But as far as photographing baseball or softball games, they're probably my favorite sports to photograph. And the reason is because I can get some really good images when I photograph these sports. Because in a sport like football or soccer, basketball, you get a lot of players congregating towards the ball. And that can either put people in the way of your shot, it can clutter your background. It's, I don't wanna say it's impossible, but to me it's very challenging to get a really good clean shot of the person you're trying to photograph with them where they really pop and stand out. Whereas with baseball, your first baseman pretty much stays at first base, your pitcher's on the mound, your batter's in the box. So whoever you're trying to photograph, you can usually get some pretty clean, solid images. Also with baseball, unlike other sports, you pretty much know where the action's gonna go. You know after a hitter gets a hit, he's gonna run to first, then second. And you should also know, if you're following the game, you know a little bit about the sport, you should know is the shortstop gonna throw the ball to second and go for the double play? Is he gonna go straight to first? So if you're paying attention, you can set yourself up to be in a position to get some really good shots. So there's four things I wanna talk about in this video. I wanna talk a little bit about camera gear, shooting positions, including uh, talking about how to shoot through fences. I also wanna talk a little bit about a little bit about camera settings as well as post-processing. So let's jump right into it with every photographer's favorite thing to talk about, camera gear. Now, because this video is directed towards those of you who are gonna be photographing high school or little league, most of those games are played during the day, which means plenty of light. Now, I don't wanna say that there's not a difference between entry level and professional gear, but I think that it becomes less of an issue when you're photographing something like baseball where you're outdoors with a lot of light. I think that that gap between professional and entry level gear is, is closed just a little bit. Unlike photographing a sport like high school football on a Friday night or basketball inside of a gym where I really recommend that you get better camera gear because of the low light situations. With baseball, you're gonna be shooting with really low ISOs and really fast shutter speeds and your camera gear becomes less of an issue, especially your camera body. Now, if you're gonna upgrade anything, I would recommend upgrading your lens. Your camera body will probably handle whatever you throw at it just fine. If you can upgrade your lens, then you can still get some decent shots. My first season of shooting baseball, I was using a Canon T3i um, I also used a Nikon D, uh, one of the 3000 series, I think it was a 31 or 3200, I forget the number, uh, and kit lenses. And yeah, I look back on those images and I kind of cringe now, but the shots were good enough that it kind of got me noticed as far as photographing sports and it got me some exposure and things grew for me from there. By upgrading your lens, you're going to get a few different things. You're going to get sharper images, and the the really big benefit of getting a better lens above your kit lens, in my opinion, is the improvement in autofocus speed. Um, you're really going to struggle with the kit lens or with the cheap lens to be able to switch and photograph and get uh, shots in focus whenever you're trying to switch from player to player. If you're already locked on a specific player and you're shooting, you're probably not gonna have any problems. But let's say you're trying to photograph the batter in the box and somebody tries to steal second base. If you're using a kit lens, you're probably gonna miss that shot of the player sliding into second base simply because the autofocus isn't going to focus fast enough. So what lenses do I recommend? Well, I recommend the longest lens you can get for the most part whenever it comes to photographing something like baseball or softball. And it's gonna depend a little bit based on where you're allowed to shoot from and also what age group you're trying to photograph. Little league fields are smaller, high school fields are bigger. So depending on where exactly you're shooting from, the size of the field and things like that, it's gonna play a little bit of a role in the, the length of the lens that you're gonna need. I personally shoot with the Sigma 120 to 300 probably 90% of the time when I photograph baseball and softball, and I'll be honest with you, I just don't feel like it gives me enough reach, especially when I'm shooting on a full frame camera. Now, in the past, I have, when I first started out, I did use a 70 to 200 a lot, and I used it on a crop sensor body, and especially for something like Little League, it worked fairly well, because a lot of Little League fields, you can get very close to the action, and the field is small, and it worked okay. 
especially when I used a teleconverter. I am a big fan of using teleconverters. I use them even with my 120 to 300, I use the teleconverter and I recommend if you're going to be shooting with the 70 to 200, I recommend that you use a teleconverter because you're going to need that extra reach. I tend to shoot a lot of softball games on my full frame camera because the field's a little bit smaller and with baseball games, high school anyways, I tend to shoot a lot on my crop sensor camera body because I want that extra reach to be able to allow me to get those plays deep in the infield and even sometimes the shallow infield I can still get shots without having to crop too heavily even though I do have to crop some. One lens that I really recommend for those of you who are Canon shooters for shooting something like baseball outdoors with the ton of light is the Canon 100 to 400 millimeter lens. I think that's a great lens, it's lightweight, it's relatively inexpensive, it focuses fast and it just delivers some pretty darn sharp images and I think that's a good lens for photographing things like baseball outdoors. Now if you happen to be in a situation where you're going to be shooting games at night, I definitely recommend that you upgrade your camera gear. You're really going to need an upgraded lens. You're going to need something like an f2.8 lens and I would recommend a full frame camera body just to get cleaner images. But since a lot of high school games aren't played at night, I'm not going to talk too much about that. So shooting positions. Now shooting positions are going to depend on your region, what age level you're shooting, all kinds of different stuff. In my particular area, especially for high school games, it is pretty much impossible to get permission to be on the field to shoot. There was an incident last season where a coach was hit with a line drive foul ball. He was seriously injured and as a result, pretty much nobody will allow me to be on the field even though I shoot for, um, I have you know, pictures published weekly in two different newspapers. I shoot for a sports news website locally. I've got insurance, the whole nine yards. I've only had one school and one coach that allowed me to be on the field this season to shoot. Now, I go up to the next county to the north and they seem to let anybody with a camera on the field. I see parents and, you know, all kinds of different people. So it's going to depend on your area, the administration, whoever's in charge as to whether or not they're going to let you shoot on the field. I go to every game assuming I'm going to have to shoot through a fence. Now shooting through a fence, it, it can be done and most of the images that I'm showing you in this video were shot through a fence. Probably 95% of them were shot through a fence. So it can be done but it does pose some problems and I'll get into that in just a minute. So my shooting positions are pretty much dictated by where I'm allowed to shoot, if I'm allowed to be on the field, and then secondly how the fence is set up. A lot of these fences these days at the newer schools they seem to be building these six, eight, ten foot high fences that go all the way around the entire field. If the field happens to have a low three or four foot fence, I'm probably going to post up near that fence and shoot over that fence for the majority of the game. Some of the fields built in the late 90s, at least in my area, near the dugouts they have these lower fences. and. I prefer to shoot without the fence. But if that isn't possible and I have to shoot through the fence, then I will do it. And talking about shooting through fences, it can be done. You don't have to be right up on top of the fence to shoot through it. If you're within about six inches or so, it's going to be a non-issue. And there's a few reasons for that. One is the players are far enough away from the fence for the most part and you're close enough to the fence that your lens is just going to completely throw that fence out of focus and it's going to be a non-issue. But it does pose problems at certain times of the day. When the sun's coming in at an angle, it's going to create a glare that comes off of the fence and it can ruin your images. Now there are some things that can be done in post-processing to clean this up and I, I'll talk about that towards the end of this video. So what I typically do is when there's a glare coming off the fence, which happens late in the afternoon when the sun's coming in at an angle, is I try to find an area of the fence that is in shade. Now unfortunately most baseball fields don't have trees built around them, so finding shade can be a bit of a challenge. So what I'll look for is I'll look for the large support posts that hold up the backstop or the fence throughout the field, and some of these posts are relatively thick. And so what happens is when the sun's at an angle, either in the morning or in the evening, it's going to come in at, a, at an angle and it's going to cause a shadow to be cast from that post and it's going to throw it onto the chain link fence and you can get anywhere from a six inch wide to a foot wide uh, patch of shade on the chain link fence and I will shoot through that because if the, shade, if the fence is in shade it's not going to create a glare and it's going to make for much cleaner images. So a lot of my shooting positions are dictated based on where I can find the shade. 
Now, ideally, depending on the layout of the field and where people are sitting and, and all of that stuff's gonna come into where I shoot from, but typically, I wanna spend the majority of the game shooting from the first base side. And there's a couple of reasons for that. From the first base side, I can photograph the right-handed batters. The majority of batters are right-handed. So if I'm set up over on first base, the batter is gonna face me when he hits. And you wanna get shots where the batter is facing you, it makes for a much better shot than getting their back as they swing through. Now the opposite is true for left-handed batters. I want to be on the third base side so that they're facing me. The other good thing about shooting from the first base side is typically your most active players on the for fielding anyways are going to be your shortstop and third baseman. And so if I'm over by the first base side, I can get shots of them fielding the ball and also when they make the throw to first, it looks like they're actually throwing the ball at me. Or Another place that I like to shoot from is from directly behind home plate. I like to shoot pictures of the pitcher throwing the ball in my direction. It gives the appearance that they're throwing the ball directly at me and I think those are really good uh, pictures. I don't spend a lot of time behind home plate, but you can get some really nice shots. You can get plays at home if you're behind home plate. And sometimes if I get a little bored, I'll even try to get creative and try to get some interesting compositions of batters from behind but it's not something I do very much. So now as far as camera settings go, the problem, the big challenge for me when I shoot baseball is on a bright Southern California day, you're gonna run into issues where players have got hats on, so you've got a really deep shadow on their face, they've got on white uniforms that are reflecting ton of a ton of light, and it can be a little bit of a challenge to get a proper exposure. Now, as far as camera settings go, the big challenge when you shoot a sport like baseball, especially where I live in Southern California, on a bright sunny day, you're gonna get very deep shadows on the face from the baseball hats, and it can create a lot of problems because it's pretty much impossible to expose for the deep shadow as well as a white uniform in the sun. So you're gonna have to make a decision. Do you wanna basically overexpose the highlights to properly expose the face? Do you want to properly try to expose the whole scene and have the face be in a deep shadow? If anything, uh, I typically try to stay within the quote-unquote proper exposure, but if anything, I might slightly overexpose because the most important part to me is getting that face and not have it be in a deep shadow. But what I do is in post-processing, I bring my shadows up almost every time that I shoot a baseball game and I bring my highlights down. Now, typically, whenever you're shooting on a bright sunny day, you're gonna be at ISO 100 with a shutter speed of like 1600, 2000, you know, who knows. Um, but you're typically not gonna have any kind of issues with your ISO or your shutter speed. But as it does begin to get dark with baseball, I try to keep my shutter speed at a minimum of 1 800th of a second, if not 1 1000th of a second and I'll push the ISO to make sure that I can keep that shutter speed. With some other sports, I don't have a problem really with dropping my shutter speed all the way down to 1 500th of a second. Even though I don't like it, I'm willing to do it. But with baseball, I don't want to do that simply because the bat and the ball move so, much, so fast that if you drop down to 1 400th of a second, the bat's just going to be a huge blur. And I don't mind a little bit of blur in the image to show some motion, but I don't like to get a lot of it. So I'll push my ISO up to keep my shutter speed high, especially when it comes to baseball. Now, as far as post-processing goes, I already mentioned that I typically bring my shadows up and I bring my highlights down. Now, when you shoot through a fence and you get the glare, typically the way that I will clean up the glare is I'm gonna bump the contrast up, I'll also bring my highlights down, bring the shadows up, just like I would any other baseball image. And I'll also throw a lot of clarity into the image. And I don't typically pump very much clarity or any clarity into my sports pictures, but I do it whenever I shoot through a fence and I've got glare. I'll also bring the blacks down to try to make the image pop a little bit more. And you can see this image, this is an unedited version and an edited version that does have a slight crop to it as well. And you can see how much of a difference that makes. So that's pretty much my workflow whenever it comes to photographing a baseball or softball game. Hopefully that helps you guys out. If you guys have any questions, tips, or hey, maybe even somebody has some suggestions on how I can do things even better, I would love to hear from you guys. Thanks for watching and have a great day.